basketball and Kathy Lowe all with three suburban personal fouls. Sue Hall fell asleep for a second. That was a one in one situation. Almost gave the ball away. She thought it was a two shot foul. Murray Snyder in trouble. Almost a five second call and it is a foul on Hanover. I'll tell you what, Lori Snyder was so smart that time, she just kept pivoting. Now, I don't know if we'll see a replay. The offensive player is entitled to the space straight up above her body. And as she was pivoting, Michelle Moxley kind of stepped in. And it could have been called either way because she took a pretty good shot in the face. Michelle got an elbow right around the mouth and she's gonna come out. Kathy Wolf will come back in. What really made that play was the pivoting by Lori Snyder to try to, to try to keep the ball away until one of her teammates broke free. Hanover's committed just two team fouls, so Suburban not into the bonus yet. Thirty-four twenty-three in favor of Suburban. This is the first shot since coming off the bench. Hanover again trying to cut it out of double figures. Send Susie Knob to the free throw line. They're just giving up a little bit too much baseline and a little bit too much area in the middle. Watch this. Hanover almost fumbles the pass. Now, the ball's going to go down to the baseline where number 24, Susie Knob, is able to drive it. And Chris Preston just a little bit late coming over and making the contact. Hanover is now 5 of 11 from the foul line. Six senior. Again, short. And a traveling call on Suburban. The Trojans' 14th turnover. Suburban is definitely in a slump here, and Hanover needs to take advantage of it. Michelle Moxley will come right back into the ballgame. Julie Davis will sit down beside Coach Strine. Under three minutes remaining, third quarter. Able to post up down low is number 13, Kathy Schaefer. And I'm just amazed at how Hanover is able to kick the ball in low against Suburban. Defensively, when you look at the size matchups, that should never happen. Suburban really isn't fronting inside. They're basically playing behind the players, which allows that ball to be kicked inside, and that's resulting in a lot of fouls. So Kathy Schaefer is right back at the free throw line. She's had some problems. When you're in the bonus situation, well, right now there's 2.44 in the clock, but they've been in the one-and-one one for about the last two minutes plus, and uh, that's way early to be in the bonus. Clearly a foul there. Eight points for Schaefer. Trying to cut the Suburban lead to nine. Another offensive rebound by Hanover. Chris Preston makes herself known. Joe Platts and Mary Straw's ball to guard. Snyder. A foul as she penetrated. She really hasn't been to the ball game the last few minutes. Not totally by her own doing, though. Right, I, I think Suburban got away from their regular offense, which was so successful in the second quarter. They need to keep the ball in Lori Snyder's hands, and Mary Straw's ball needs to continue to work for that high percentage shot. Some of the Suburban fans wanted them to count the field goal. Now, I think the foul clearly came right, but I thought the whistle blew before she broke through there and put up the shot. I agree. There's a timeout on the floor. It is Suburban leading by 10 as you look at Keenan Preston coach of the boys basketball champions here in the York County League and we'll be seeing them very soon here on cable for York against the Lebanon Cedars the Lancaster Lebanon League champions why the serious athlete the mathematics of exercise indicate that sooner or later you push yourself further than you ever thought possible when you do the serious athlete is staffed to give you the technical advice and personal attention necessary to make your selection a successful one let our exercise experts aid you in making the proper choice for all your athletic needs. 
So, whatever your ability level, from world class to novice, we take your sport seriously. The Serious Athlete, with three locations in York and Hanover. Larry King Live. You gotta hear it to believe it. <laughs> uh, I started in live television, of course, back around the Civil War, I believe it was. <laughs> I've changed purpose. I've changed. Mean, you've changed as we go along, <laughs> and we enjoy it. <laughs> Nobody ever calls me Mr. Manley. I'm very happy the way things are going. <laughs> All right, what a rush. Larry King Live, weeknights at 9, only on CNN. Believe it or not, this field goal counts. All right, I think the whistle blew right in there. Right there's the contact. I thought that's where the whistle blew. Lori Snyder smartly continued in, in hopes of getting the, the basket, and she did. So the NBA York Suburban Trojans missed the free throw, but right there at Sioux Hall. 38-24 Trojans on a big four-point play. Kepper down low for Moxley. Chris Preston confronts her immediately. And the offensive rebound by Hanover again. Kathy Schaefer, Nave Abel convert, but a steal. Karen Keffer. Under two minutes in the third quarter. Snyder for Plax to Hall. Chris Preston. Now they're back to looking for each other. Lori Snyder dished it off on the baseline, handed back to Holland, and Preston finished it off with the offensive rebound. 40 to 24 Trojans. One on one. Chris Preston cuts off the hand of her player. Kathy Wolf. 19 Nighthawk turnovers. And I'll tell you what, I really think at least half of those, Scott, are in direct proportion to how tired they are. In all fairness to the Hanover Nighthawks. They exerted a lot of pressure and emotion to try and get back into the ball game, and because they shot free throws the way they did, they never really would get it under 10. And like that, Suburban turns it over. Hanover content to run. Moxley against Snyder. And a whistle underneath and a crowd will see who the foul's on. Keep in mind, Chris Preston has three. You should see her on your screen. Well, Hanover continues to run and play the full court D. That is what got them into this game. And you usually make very few minor adjustments in preparation for a championship game. You very rarely make major changes. That'll be Mary Straw's ball's fourth personal foul. She goes to the bench. Kathy Schaefer again short at the free throw line. Julie, check that, Kathy Lowe is back in for Suburban. She and Jill Platt to the guards. 40 to 24, Hanover trailing and at the line. Schaefer with nine points to lead Hanover. They trail by 15. Julie Davis bumped as she goes up court and Sue Hall put it on the baseline. take her place. Karen Keffer plays extremely hard. I've been watching her on defense. She, again, I think I said this in the first half, looks like she goes 110% both ways until she's totally out of gas and has to be taken out of the game. 45 seconds to go in this third quarter. Led by Mary Straw's balls, 12 points. Julie picked out Lori Snyder with 11, but now a chance at the free throw line. Scott, sometime tonight we got to get our trivia question in. We'll go right ahead. All right, as we take a look at the replay here, we'll let you call it as I give Scott tonight's trivia question. Both these head coaches had previous head coaching jobs. Don Strine in the YCIAA Boys League, Roger Miller somewhere other than Suburban. Name their previous head coaching jobs. I'll give you my answer. 
if I have one. In the, <laughs> in the fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. Okay, let's get back to the game. Lori Snyder makes one of two and has 12 points. Suburban by 16. Ellie Hoover was open for just an instant. 20 seconds remaining, third period. Moxley goes right by Snyder. Kathy Wolf gets the offensive rebound. 12 seconds remaining. And another foul, this on Suburban's Jill Platts. Platts with two, Preston and Lowe with three, and Strasball with four personal fouls for Suburban. Now Missy Krause will come in. Kathy Lowe is going to take a seat. One and one for Susie Knob. Knob with three points. Susie, a five six senior. Suburban, seven seconds to go the length of the court. They got into front court with four. Preston with two. We're headed to the fourth quarter. York Suburban looking for their first ever girls high school basketball championship. And on their way, they lead going into the fourth quarter. You know, as a member of the business community, you've got to stay competitive with the latest advancements in the business world. As a consumer, you need to know what's now and what's new. Over 200 area businesses will exhibit their products and services at the York Area Business Fair, March 12th and 13th at the York Fairgrounds in Memorial Hall and Old Main. Free admission and parking, and you can register for daily prizes from York Area restaurants. Children under 16 must be accompanied by an adult. The York Area Business Fair, sponsored by the York Area Chamber of Commerce. You can't afford to miss it. Stamina, agility, courage, vision, knowledge, diversity, discipline, balance, drive. Shearson, Lehman Brothers, respected advisors to the serious investor. Minds over money. Fourth period action, and Hanover will get the ball to start this fourth quarter. They trail by 14. Kathy Wolf against Chris Preston. Blocked the shot. I've got half your trivia question. All right, go Roger ahead. Miller at your college. Yes. Don Strine coached a boys 50, team. 50% is failing, Scott. <laughs> I know it is. This is what I expect Suburban to do. Go to this zone now, really pack it in, and use Preston's rebounding, Snyder's rebounding, and Sue Hall's rebounding. That's a big back line in there right now. And again, Chris Preston blocks Kathy Wolf's shot. Hanover steals it right back, and as she hits the deck, Susie Knob will get up and head to the free throw line. That back line in that 2-3 zone goes 6-1-5-9-5-7. That's a nice 2-3 zone back line. And Don Strine, as we look at him, Scott, your answer, please. I'm failing. Boys basketball coach. You know it is, Paul. Don't know. Let's look at the replay again here. All right, we'll take the fast shot, then the replay, then the answer to the trivia. Board. Susie Knob. Right there is the contact. She forces it, which is a good play on her part, to take it to the glass. This was Don Strine's home gym. He coached the York Votech Spartans, Scott. Chris Preston hauls down the rebound for Suburban. I wish we would have kept track of our trivia questions. And I know that you grade hard. <laughs> <laughs> Missy Krause and Lori Snyder. Jill Platts, Chris Preston, and Sue Hall on the game for Suburban. They lead 41 to 27. 
Chris Preston all alone for a sixth point of the game. We again will be picking a prism player of the game at the end of this contest. Chris Preston, her third block shot of this fourth quarter. Susie Knob down low, and another block shot by Preston. Obviously not a great move to take it inside right now on the Trojans. Twelve points for Snyder and Straw's ball for Suburban. They lead all scores as Joe Platts with five. And an assist to Lori Snyder. And Hanover coach Don Strine. Not sure if he wanted a timeout. Did want to make a substitution. And Hanover is going to talk about it. 45-27 Suburban. 6.08 to play in this York County Girls Basketball Championship. Want to put some excitement in your life? Well, here it is. A Jack Jimbalvo Trans Am. There's really nothing like it. And for the best selection in the area, it's Jack Jimbalvo Pontiac Mazda Isuzu in York, the dealer that cares. Remember, Jack Jimbalvo wants your business, he needs your business, and he truly cares. So come in today for a test drive. Jack Jimbalvo Pontiac Mazda Isuzu, Route 30 East in York. Chris Preston has a fine fourth period, Craig. She's having an excellent defensive fourth period, plus the one score right there. She's been squatting away inside since she's been back in this game. There's four block shots and a field goal in this fourth quarter. Six points for the game. Kathy Schaefer has nine points to lead Hanover. Scott, we probably want to take a look uh, sometime during this quarter where both these teams will be heading in districts so that uh, I'm just curious when the next date that Hanover plays because I think these kids need a day off tomorrow and hopefully they have at least two or three days before their next playoff game. York Suburban has turned the ball over 18 times in this game. And another rebound for Lori Snyder. On the other hand, Suburban with, they got Hanover with 20 turnovers. Suburban has no opponent right now except the clock. Jill Platts with a miss, Chris Preston with a tap. Both of these clubs, Craig, will play two days after this ball game. That is a grind of a schedule. Steal by Hanover and a foul out front. Well, when Don Strun takes a look at the tape of this game with still 5.15 to go, he's got to be extremely proud of the way his players have played. Hard, have never slowed up in one way, and have never changed their game plan at all. Suburban's just played very, very well. I had a coach tell me once that kids this age never get tired. But I think that is meant to be within the context of a game. I think over, when they go through, through something like Hanover's going through, I think then it really wears on them. Well, and I'll tell you, there's another aspect of that, Scott. Physical tiredness, and you also get mentally tired because you're going to school all day. You, a lot of these kids don't even leave school before they board a bus to come to these games. Maybe they're getting a little bit of homework done, and it's just not an easy struggle at championship time and playoffs because of the pressure. Is called on Kathy Schaefer of Hanover will march to the other end for free throws. Suburban by 17 with 5.13 to go in this game. Sue Hall at the free throw line, a 5.7 senior. You know, Scott, we talked the other night about the evolution of Central or York High for the boys' site. It appears as though the league is pretty well set on both tech. Missed by Hall. Another Hanover turnover. Chris Preston.
Boston with a nice catch up front. Hall right there for a second shot. Joe Platts off the Preston screen. Nice pick and roll. Chris Preston with eight points. It's a play you don't see a lot anymore with the motion offense. Pass screen away. The screen around the ball. Karen Kepper from the outside. As we shoot free throws, the point you made about sights, I'm talking with Ed Bruner of District 3 a couple of days ago. And they had a situation where they had to move boys games out of central out of central York to make room for something. Very easily moved our boys games. Girls games, not so. Very anxious to stick with a particular site for a girls game. Did he give you a reason for No. That? Should I try to think of one? I've got one. The miss by Jill Platts, and Hanover runs the other way. Chris Preston has been a monster on the rebounding board. <laughs> Substitutions for Suburban. 43 and 44 are... Larice Mitchell and Elkie Julius. I really like to see this because with this substitution with four minutes to go, it shows that Roger Miller's trying to work kids into the game. And usually it's the team that's down that substitutes first. But I think Roger realizes that uh, the Hanover kids are tired. And Julie Gherkin's been on the bench and they put in a great effort and he's making the first move. Frank Spells whistles the personal foul on Larice Mitchell. 47 to 25, Suburban leading and looking as though they're going to be the York County girls basketball champions for the first time. All right, you see the penetration here. Good pass inside. Nice drop step. Takes it right up to the basket. Kathy Schaefer at the free throw line. Hanover had their opportunities at third period where they cut into that lead, but unable to convert some free throws and really not able to take advantage of the situation. I think the Hanover basketball program really developed with the turnaround with Betsy Whitman. Uh, Don Strine has done an excellent job. Gaffey Schaefer in double figures now with 11 points. Hanover steals it right back. A block by Suburban and a foul called on the Trojans, number 44, Elkie Julius. Scott, I'd like to take this opportunity to mention, starting Monday, March 3rd, Strictly Sports will be doing a feature on the York Suburban Swim Program. Spent about an hour and a half with Dick Geyer today, uh, doing an interview, uh, had coverage of them, uh, an incredible program, 116 and 0, boys dual meet records, girls 114 and 2. Strictly Sports, Monday, March 3rd, on cable for York. to go in this ballgame and Hanover still pressuring full court. Chris Preston with a nice pair of hands, a good catch. Nice head fake by Lori Snyder. 14 points. Pump fake, get the defense off their feet, drive in for a higher percentage shot, score two. Approaching the three-minute mark to go in this ball. Again, Chris Preston on the block. kind of take things for granted and that program the number of wins they've rung up and the number of victories that your Catholic's JV basketball team has rung up in a row I don't think really are are appreciated by some people right they you were exactly right they start taking it for granted the interesting thing I found out in profiling Dick Dyer in the program over his 18 years there is there's a lot more behind the man in the program than just the wins the wins have taken care of themselves. 
interesting character. I think people enjoy that uh, that particular segment of Strictly Sports. York County Junior Miss, Lori Snyder with 16 points. One to 30, Suburban. Jill Platt's whistled for the personal foul, and that will be her second. Scott, I really feel for Don Strine right now with a little under three minutes to go in the game, down 21. This is a three-minute segment that feels like about three days long, if not three weeks. It's a really tough position to be in because your kids have played their heart out. They've made their runs, but they've never quite gotten over the hump. Karen Keffer from the free front. If it's any consolation, you talked about fatigue. Hanover will play their next district game in their own backyard at Delone. Hopefully that will help, yes. And these kids are gritty, big hearts. I'll tell you, this girl that's at the line right now just really plays hard all the time, as do all the Hanover players. It, it's been a well-contested game as far as how hard the players are playing. Karen Keffer now with four points. Hanover on that game will be playing alone, and both teams did agree to play at that site so they could thank, thank their fans really for helping come out and support them. Somebody's got to look at her for the next two years, putting those shots down from the outside. All cotton that time. All alone down low is Hanover's number 13, Kathy Schaefer. Chris Preston ahead of the pack. Two points for Chris Preston, but a great assist. 55 to 34 with under two minutes to play. Suburban leading. Michelle Moxley. Suburban fans starting a chant. And a three-second violation against Hanover. This will be the first ever championship, Scott, for the York Suburban girls. Chris Preston comes to the bench. It won't be her first. Steele on the inbounds and laying it in underneath the Susie Knopf. That's an interesting point. She will be the answer to a trivia question. What York County girls player won two championships at two different schools? She was on a division winner at Suburban. Not only this year, but her freshman year won a county championship at York High as part of a team, I should say, and now is going to win one at Suburban. Did York High win her sophomore year? I'm struggling with that right now. It seems to me they didn't. They might have been in the game, but didn't win. Correct. So she has two championships in two years. Fifty-five, thirty-six. Hanover trailing at the free throw line. Michelle Moxley with six points tonight. shot 28 free throws in this ball game. And on their 29th, they make their 16th. To Hanover's credit, still pressuring them full court. And that's one of the things they give up, that basket underneath the miss, though, by Elkie Julius. And Suburban steals it right back. in this ball game. Forty-two with Mary Straw's ball. Only a sophomore. Kathy Lowe just a sophomore. The other three starters are seniors. Straw's ball forced it in traffic. Chris Preston, Lori Snyder, Jill Platts, all seniors. We mentioned the two sophomores for Hanover. Five seniors will start this game. Starter who is missing and injured, Julie Gurkin is just a junior. Hoover misses the bank shot. 